hello. We're back. Hello flowers, hello nookus, hello jab. How's your Friday treating you? Hello, Death Grips Pog. This this week was a garbage dump of work. Yeah. I tell you, some weeks are heavy. Are you a junior or a senior? I think especially junior year. I think especially junior year at UB is one of the heaviest. Yeah. So Calvin, you're, I think you're in the thick of it. I think at least, tell me if I'm wrong, but I think once you get to senior year, it levels out a little bit. Yeah, junior year. Hang in there, you guys. Okay. At least the lab wasn't due this week, too. No. Yeah. Senior year treating Nucus pretty good. That's good. Hang in there, guys. You can do it. Cries in space dynamics and controls. That's with Crescidus, right? Crescidus knows what he's talking about. It wasn't a smart idea to take six classes. Woo! Six. You got this. Is there senioritis in college? I think when, when you're like at the end of anything, it takes a little extra effort to push through. Do you teach vehicle dynamics too? Yes, I teach road vehicle dynamics. And I also do flight dynamics. How much convective heat is transferred from your face to your tears? Mildew, seven classes? Dang! <laughs> Are you not drowning? Oh, I am. How old was I when I completed my PhD? Um, see, that was 2016. I'm 32. What is that? 27? 28? You be promised I could finish in four. That was a lie. Are you doing, um, are you doing double, um, mechanical and arrow? Hang in there. Change this thing. We're doing MAE Lab 1. And we're talking about relays. I'm not even double arrow and Mac anymore, and I might do four years. Yeah, this class is the highlight of the week. Hey, I'm so glad you enjoy it. We're trying to have a good time. We're trying to learn some stuff. Um, so I haven't posted workshop three yet. That's gonna be up, um, realistically it might be up Sunday, but 
I will tell you this, workshop three is a, it might be the shortest workshop we have yet. Um, it's cool, it's very useful. It's a little bit shorter, so not as much as a, a time commitment. Um, that also gives you more time to work on the lab report. Because that's due, well not next week, but the week, the week after that. So I'll be live speed running workshop three next week. Nice, I mean, that would be, <laughs> I mean, we could, we could do that. We could add leaderboards. If you have a timestamp on your video to prove, that'd be impressive. Yeah, try to get the sub 20. Uh. <laughs> all right, but workshop three is all about relays. So let's, let's talk about them. So this is our motivation for studying relays and figuring out how they work so this is the motivation an arduino outputs or any microcontroller a very small amount of power i mean we can turn on and off leds we could read data from sensors we can power sensors but um if you want to power a motor or some actuator, you could only power the smallest of actuators. Actually, um, I think the servo motor from our kit, the stepper motor from our kit, you can actually power with the Arduino board. But these are, they're not typical. So like for most tasks that you want to take on for different projects that you want to try, whether you're building a, a little UAV or you're, you're doing your own automated garden or whatever projects you want to take on you're going to need more power than the arduino can supply so this is where the relay comes in a relay allows an arduino to interface with an external power source so that we can control larger devices. Uh, just a, a little like a side story, but uh, one project that I've worked on a little bit, or actually quite a bit with, with some students from UB as well, is um, if you've seen Ready Player One, you know that it's all in virtual reality and they have these treadmills that the people stand on to interact with virtual reality. Um, like you can walk on this treadmill and it feels like you're walking forever in this wide virtual environment, but really you're just staying in the same place because the treadmill adapts to your speed. Anyways, we tried to build a very simple one. VR is sick, I agree. Uh, but we were, so what I did is I found this treadmill on Craigslist that somebody was throwing out. I got it for, I don't know, 50 bucks. And we tried to control it with an Arduino. And um, so we needed to use a relay. Well, we actually used a, a motor controller, which is a variety of relay, a motor driver, sorry. Um, but that allowed us to interface with the existing uh, power supply like a like a treadmill plugs into the wall, right? But we could tap into that power with the Arduino or, or rather just regulate how it was diverted. So a, re a Relay is going to help us with that. You can divert a, a lot of power. So Relays are electrical switches So what did you do your PhD thesis on? It was on the dynamics of flexible structures and the control of flexible structures. Oh man, that was a while ago. Well, not too long ago. So relays are electrical switches 
So like a light switch, they open or close a circuit connection. But the difference, the difference between a relay and a light switch, so unlike a light switch, a relay opens or closes a connection Jeez, I can't write a connection using an electromagnet. So instead of you flipping, using a relay to automatically turn off your headlights. Oh, there's, okay, very nice, very nice. I know I disabled hyperlinks in the chat. Throw it in the Discord. So instead of flipping a switch with a finger, we use a magnet. What does a light switch use? A light switch is just, it's just mechanically, like when you actually, when you actually turn a light switch, you physically move a little latch that connects a circuit. So you're actually connecting some wires when you turn on or off a light switch. Okay, so I'm gonna make some pictures here below that's gonna show how it works. So here's, here's one option where the relay closes a switch and allows current to flow. So this is like, um, light switches are terrifying, especially the older designs. There's a visible spark. Oh, geez. So this first option that I'm talking about is like when you turn on a light. You close an electrical switch and you allow current to flow through. So let's let's make a drawing. So this is going to be our switch, and I'm going to draw it open. So right now it's disconnected. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a spring, and it's attached over here to, to something but it's holding this latch open. So, okay, let's, um, let's just make a note here. Because this is open, obviously, no current can flow through. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw an electromagnet underneath you can build an electromagnet yourself if you YouTube it, but I mean, it's, it's basically, you take a coil, you wrap it around something in this, in this coiled fashion, and if you run current through it by, you know, applying a voltage across the leads, it actually creates a magnetic force. I'm gonna move this down a little bit. So I'm going to draw a picture to the side. And this is when we turn this is when we turn the magnet on. I know if you're following along on paper, you don't have the luxury of copying and pasting. I'm I'm sorry. Okay, so let's say we turn this on. Turn on the electromagnet, and I'll just abbreviate it EM. That's going to create a magnetic force down in this direction and it's going to pull this down to close the circuit and what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw this spring because it got stretched out so the string I mean the, the spring is actually in tension now and if I were to turn off the electromagnetic magnet again this switch would uh, pop open because the spring would pull it back so what I've drawn here is what we call a normally open switch. So this switch is normally open. And so you'll, you'll see this referred to as NO when you look up different types of switches. Drulish says, so a relay controls the switch or the relay is the switch. That's an excellent question. The switch 
is a piece of the relay. So we'll, we'll get, I'll, I'll expand on that, but the relay is this whole contained structure that has the electromagnet inside as well. But right now I'm just focusing on the mechanism here. So we have this normally open switch. We turn on the electromagnet. Oh, and now there is current or the, the potential for current to throw, to flow through at least because now it's connected. All right, so let's, let's look at another option. And this is going to be the normally closed option. Oh, I dropped a diagram of relays and solenoids into the Discord. Thank you, Jean. Okay, so another option. The relay opens a switch. Up above it closed a switch. And this turns off the, the, the current flow. So let's draw a similar picture where the switch is kind of up like this. But this other path is meeting it up here already. And let, let's put a spring on here, just the same way. So there's a spring attached here, and this is its comfortable neutral position. But once again, let's put the electromagnet underneath, a coil of wire, Maybe I'll move it down a little bit. So right now, the electromagnet is off. But current is able to flow because the switch is closed. Let's move this down a little. So this switch is normally closed. And we abbreviate that with NC. So you'll see this when you look at switches, when you look at relays, you'll know what NC means now. Okay, so let's, I think you know what happens when we turn on this electromagnet. You can visualize it at this point. I'll copy this over here. I'll erase this for now. But I'm gonna energize this electromagnet it's going to create a magnetic force, and this is going to pull down here. And maybe I'll just erase this, make it a little easier to see. And this spring is going to be stretched. And there's no possibility for current to flow across that gap. So this is a normally closed configuration, and when you activate the electromagnet, it, um, it disables it, right? So the kind of relay that you have in your kit, and we'll look at it, it's actually a combination of options one and two. So let's talk about that. So th this might be the most common type of relay. A relay will come both with normally open and normally closed. So let's I wrote some text here, but let's make the drawing first. So we're gonna have we're gonna have a path, and we're gonna draw this latch here, and it's being held in that position by by a spring, but it's connected to a path up here, like the normally closed. But there's another path down here that's available. So this top one, we'll call it the normally closed path. This one's the normally open path. And then once again, we got this electromagnet sitting underneath. So here's where the text makes sense. If the electromagnet is off, the normally closed path is connected, that upper path. If the electromagnet is on, the normally open path will be connected. And let's just, for completeness, why don't we just draw that real quick? 
And the name of this, it's going to be a single pole double throw SPDT relay. So the double throw refers to these two possible paths. Okay, so let's draw, when we energize this magnet, it moves down and it stretches out that spring. So whenever we release the electromagnet, the spring is gonna pull it back to its normally closed position. So when we have the word normal in here or the N, it just refers to what is the configuration when the electromagnet is off. Because we want to conserve power in whatever application we're using, if you're going to choose an open or a closed configuration, uh, you want the normal condition to be when the relay's turned off. Because you, you don't want to be wasting power and money to, to keep that thing turned on. Okay, so now we've just kind of abstractly talked about this. Let's take a look at the relay from the kit. So if you have your kit, you're gonna notice we have one of these little dudes. It's just a blue little box on the outside. But if you were to open it, and don't do this, at least until after the workshop because I you need it to be working but I think it would be interesting to open it up and it should look like something like this inside and you can relate this to the drawings we did you see the electromagnet obviously a coil of wire and then uh, it's hard to see here but you have the normally open and normally closed contact and you have a movable switch so I have this that zooms in a little bit on this interface right here okay so let me try to explain this this top we'll call this the normally closed contact in C the bottom is the normally open contact and uh haha now i want to open it up i tend to do that yeah i i would say do that open it up but wait until after this workshop just in case it breaks okay and then in the middle this is that uh that switch that it can either go up or it can go down and notice which ones are in contact with each other right now we have the switch and the normally open connected right now. So these are connected. Wait, let me ask you this. When this picture was taken, was the electromagnet on or off? Calvin says on, Droolish says off. Calvin says both? You can't say both? The answer is on. Because remember, um, normally open means that, yeah, normally that circuit is gonna be open, meaning disconnected it's not closed there's no current flowing so it's shown in its not normal position which is only achieved when the electromagnet closes it so when the electromagnet is off this is connected up top to the normally closed so the electromagnet is on and that's that's how it's connected um so let's briefly talk about how do we practically use this in a circuit schrodinger's relay you can't look inside okay so there's there's five connectors on your relay 
Like up in this picture, you can only see two of these little leads poking out, but there's there's five of them. Actually, I could show you right now. Um, this is gonna be the circuit that you're using for the workshop. Here's the relay. Focus. So it might not focus, but you can see that there's there's five little leads, three on one side, two on the other. I'll just leave this here for now. All right, we're, I wanna go back. Schrodinger's catch actually does involve a relay. Workshop three run, how to fix a broken relay. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Okay, so there's five connection points and I kind of made a drawing here. Um, wait, maybe I'll, like I'm gonna rebuild this drawing for you. I'm gonna move this over here and do it from scratch so you can follow along. We're not even gonna look, we're not even gonna look at it. So let's draw a box. We're gonna use isometric perspective here. Are all relays actually fully mechanical? No. So we, uh, that's what triggers the hammer to release and smash the bottle of poison. Oh my goodness. All right, let's draw the, no. So you can do what relays do with a transistor and you do have a trans I think you have two transistors in your kit we may talk about transistors they do the same thing a relay does um, uh, but they use a diode and it's a it's a semiconductor it's it's not it's it it has no mechanical moving parts at all It's interesting, but it's a little more complicated to implement, in my opinion. Okay, so let's let's draw our leads. First, I'm, actually, first I'm going to draw the electromagnet inside. So it's it's standing up in this box. Okay, and we're just going to draw like some coils. Oh, we're gonna need we're gonna need a diode for this as well. Why use a relay over a transistor or vice versa? Um, okay, so I think generally a mechanical relay like this is better for switching high power devices. But this is going to switch slower than a transistor can. A transistor can switch extremely fast. So this mechanical relay is more like, I, like the delay on this, you can actually hear the, the switch closing. Like when you do this workshop, you're gonna hear a click and you'll know that it's that contact moving. But that takes a little bit of time. A transistor is much faster. Okay, so let's draw two leads that have to do with this electromagnet. So one lead comes off over here. Another lead comes off over here. And we'll call this the positive terminal for the electromagnet. And we'll call this the negative terminal for the electromagnet. Transistors are way smaller. You know how computers used to be the size of a room? Yeah, I mean, transistors are what computers are built upon. Like, they're, it's such a, like when you, I, I would encourage you to watch a YouTube video on transistors. It, it's cool to see the basic principle 
and then how networks of transistors with this basic like binary logic you can build uh, complicated computational systems it's crazy so these these are going to power on that electromagnet and there this is going to be what the arduino does so Okay, we'll talk more about that in a second. But, okay, those are two leads. You need those to connect that. And then let's draw over here in the top, like on the top edge, I'm going to draw a schematic of the switch we were kind of using earlier. So this is going to be one side. And I'm going to draw it in its, like, natural position where this is up. And then there's going to be like another node over here. There are five steps under the relay, how to find the positive and negative end. So I'll show you in the, in another schematic, but actually it, it corresponds to this drawing I'm doing as well. You'll see once I finish it. Okay. So we have this switch right now. It's, it's open. This path is going to come down here and have a lead coming off. And this is the normally open path. If we power the electromagnet, this closes. And, and that'll be, and that, that circuit will be complete. Actually, this should be, let's leave that. Okay, let's draw another wire up here. that is connected normally. And we'll have that go down to the other side. So this is the normally closed path. I know this, this perspective is getting uh, maybe a little weird, but I, I hope you, I hope you can see this. Like if this thing, moves down that other path won't be connected okay so what is this connected to this is where our fifth pin comes in and I'm going to draw this in red so this pin is on the other side it starts here it goes like across and it connects right at this node and this is where we tap in the external power. This is not coming from the Arduino. So if we draw this switch in its normal position, this will be connected here. So power is diverted along that normally closed path that comes from this side, goes around, and then it comes down that other side. So we have this highway system. You flip it when you turn on or off the electromagnet. With this relay, can we get AC and DC? Yes. Let's go back up here, because I want to show you the top of this, because I wanted to mention this. It'll tell you right on top that um, we can get 10 amps, 250 volts, AC. Ten amps, 30 volts, DC. So this this can this can handle a lot of power coming through. Yeah, because I mean, when you look at this, so this is the, this leg over here is the normally open path. And if you look at this, this is kind of like a meaty P 
piece of metal. And this over here, like wrapping around the top, this is where the power is traveling through. And then it's symmetrical on the other side. That's where the closed path goes down and it has that other meaty piece of metal. That's why it can, it can carry. It's not like your little jumper wires in there. Um, even though we will be using jumper wires for workshop three, we're not gonna be diverting a lot of power. Okay, so, so, okay, just to be complete, we'll number these. One, two. So this is the positive end of the electromagnet. This is the negative end of the electromagnet. We'll call this three external power. Four, let's call this one four normally open path and then we'll do five over here normally closed five leads coming off okay so like we saw this particular relay can handle up to 30 volts of dc 10 amps of current so um I mentioned this earlier, but here's the, is the external pin coming from the computer? No, we're gonna use, um, actually, yeah, I'll, I'll show you right now. Okay, so let's get in here a little bit more. In your kit, you have a nine volt battery and it has uh, this little jack on the end. Get some wires, stick them into your power socket, then put, th no, don't listen to Calvin. Don't listen to Calvin, okay? And you also have this little power board that, that's in your kit, this little regulator. And the way the pins are organized, it's nice, this can fit directly onto your breadboard and it uses these uh, power columns on the side. And you're gonna take this nine volt battery and you're gonna plug it in here. And then what this device can do, uh, it can either output a steady five volts or it can output three volts. So it's kind of, let's see if we can get in here. Focus. You can kind of see a little five volt over here, right? So now that I have the nine volt power source plugged in, this device outputs five volts along this positive column on the breadboard. So that's all powered with five volts right now. And then, um, the the positive column over here is going to be 3.3 volts the way i set it up right now and then the the negative column is just a ground so that's our external power and oopsies what what i'm going to power is this little dc motor this comes in your kit and it has a little fan attachment as well. Yeah, you can put a little fan on here. And okay, so something you'll notice, if you, if you look at this in your kit, there's these wires that are directly soldered to the DC motor. Now these are, precariously soldered it's very easy oh you you broke your uh well okay so as you can see mine's broken too like i i disconnected um the the ground on accident and actually it doesn't matter which order you connect 
uh, positive and negative on this DC motor. It'll just change the direction of rotation. But uh, so the workaround, if if one or both of your leads pop off, um, you can actually kind of slide a jumper wire under here and kind of like tack it in and um, basically that's my workaround. Anyways, this, um, you don't want to plug this directly into your Arduino. Um, well, well, we'll mention this in a second, but th this is the device that we want to power and it requires more power than the Arduino can provide itself. So we have this external power supply, which is creating five volts through here, and the relay is gonna deviate that power. The, sol the soldering and wires on those are weak, and it happened to me. You can re-solder, it'll be way stronger. Yeah, if you have a soldering iron, which I'm guessing only a, a few of you do, you can re-solder these connections, but if not, just take a jumper wire and you can kind of pinch it underneath there. You just need to make some contact. Um, okay, let's go back here really quick. I went the wrong one. Okay. So the beautiful part about the relay The Arduino has enough power to energize the electromagnet and close the switch. <clears throat> I have a torch for soldering pipes. Will that work? Yeah, you should definitely, you should definitely use that. Like what you would use, you know, um, in a mechanic shop. You should just use that. TIG, MIG. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think you'll find that your motor will become solder. Well said. Uh, okay, yeah, acetylene. Yeah, you could use that as well. You could um, hairspray and a lighter. You know, something like that. So, the Arduino outputs very little power, but it's enough to energize the electromagnet and close the switch. And then that'll allow the external power to flow through. So, let's... Let's, let, let's go back to this circuit. So, let's see if I can get this going. Just as a preview... Um, Okay, something to be said about the relay. It doesn't fit precisely into your breadboard. Uh, and I, I did some research on this. The way that they manufacture the leads on the relay, it's not compatible with the dimensions of the breadboard. I think a standard breadboard spacing is like an eighth of an inch. Tell me if I'm wrong on that, but this doesn't fit. So like, if you look at it this way, you're gonna see this middle lead, which is the power. If you go back to the, to the drawing we did before, the side with three edges, the middle one is the external power. I had to like bend that to the side. Um, okay, let's, let's just kind of zoom in here. And I'll be doing, I'll be doing this on Twitch on Monday, so like you can, we can build this step by step together. But I'm kind of like pressing hard to try to get this in, and it doesn't even really one eighth inch confirmed. Yeah, so it's an eighth of an inch between these holes. The spacing is not going to work out for this, so you're going to have to like kind of jam it, and. For me to get this to work, I actually have to physically hold it down with my finger. Like if I release the pressure, it's not gonna work. Um, 
Another thing. I have this. So, okay, let's, let's talk about these wires first. This red wire in the middle is delivering our external power. So remember, we plug nine volts into this power board and then the power board regulates it to five volts, which goes into this column here. So this red wire, I know there's a couple, but this one that's going into the, the red wire that's going into the middle is connected to that five volts. So that five volts is going to that middle pin. And then these, this other red and blue wire, this is going to energize the electromagnet. And that's connected to the Arduino, as you can tell. Yeah, those two wires go to the Arduino. It can provide the power to energize the electromagnet. So I have the positive to pin 13, so it turns it on just like an LED. But what the heck is this little piece in between? It looks like a resistor. I think you have two of these in your kit. This is a diode. Yes. What if I, what happens if I hook the five volt? Don't do that. Okay. Now the diode, the reason we have this plugged in here is to deal with an issue called inductor kickback, which you might've heard of, you might not. This electromagnet in here is an inductor. An inductor is just a, a coil of wire. So an electromagnet is an inductor. Um, in the case that you have an inductor in your circuit and you, um, if you immediately disconnect current from that inductor, that creates what we call inductor kickback and it drives the voltage in the circuit very high and it can break stuff. So this is especially important because your relay, because of the dimensions that it's manufactured, it's not super secure in your breadboard anyways. So it will happen that this electromagnet and the relay will be intermittently connected or disconnected. Lenz's law, I'm not totally familiar with that term. It, it might be. So what the diode does, this is called a, in, in this configuration, it's called a flyback diode, and it prevents that spike in voltage from occurring. And I won't expand too much on that right now. On the Monday session, when I go through workshop three, I'll talk a little bit more about inductor kickback. But all you need to know for now is we need that diode to be, to be going connected to that same place where we have the electromagnet. Um, wait, okay, so let's, let's actually plug this in. We got like two minutes left. I think I have the relay code on here. I have everything plugged in. I'm gonna take off this, this fan on here. just because um, I kind of have to do this modified thing anyways. Good grief. So diode turns intermittent connection to constant flow. It's more like it, if a, if a disconnection happens, it's going to create this like, um, alternative place for the current to flow and it prevents a voltage spike from um, prevents current from flowing in the opposite direction due to inductor kickback yes so on Monday I think I'll set up a little example and I'll go through the math and, and like a simple circuit and we'll we'll define precisely what that is because right now I know I'm kind of hand waving a little bit um, okay so let's see I have everything okay I need to plug this in 
And we'll zoom out a little bit. So I think the relay isn't totally connected right now. So I'm going to press down on it. I don't know if you can hear this. I'm going to connect the little, um, this little dude now. Oh, geez. But when the relay turns on, you can hear a little click. So what the code is doing is it's, um, it's just turning on and off the electromagnet. Come on. Oh, I must not know, have a good connection here. Come on, buddy. What did I do? Because you can hear the relay clicking. Sounds like a relay. Is your thumb stopping the fan? I think the fan blades are unobscured by my... Oh, so this... I have a feeling it's this troublesome lead. Come on, buddy. Wait, what if? I wonder if it's like the metal. Okay, what if I? You could just take some E-tape and tape the lead to the motor. Did the other wire break? I think the other wire is still connected. If you guys like that E-tape solution, if you think of a good solution, because I know it's not going to be just me that um, breaks this. What happens if I connect the motor directly to power? Okay, you shouldn't connect the motor directly to the Arduino, but this external power I think would be fine. Because a motor also has an inductor. And so you'll definitely have inductor kickback there. Ooh. Let's put this little fan on. This, this is beautiful. This will keep you cool in the summer. Oh, geez. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay, so that's fine. Let's go back over here, though. So this over here is the normally open connection of the relay. So when I turn on the electromagnet, I close the switch over here. So power should be coming to this normally open. Wait, what if I really like, see, I'm, this is, this is the trouble. I have to actually physically hold that thing down. Oh, this is weird. So this is basically a workshop to make code for a dollar USB fan I can buy from Walmart. You could put it, you could put it that way. Am I? F, I know, I know, I don't know. Like, I think it's in the right, it's in the right pin here. Oh my goodness, I'm not, ha I'm not happy with it. Is a pin broken off the relay? No, these are still, these still look good. Like, so I could hear the clicking. So the electromagnet was definitely turning on and off, right? So we know that. Oh, maybe this power pin. 
wasn't secure. Oh, it's working. You can hear it drilling the size of my the side of my my breadboard. Can you hear it? So yeah, you have to. Maybe we should elongate the pens. Yeah, they're. <sighs> if you guys think of a good solution, I. Like, I tried to, like, one thing I thought of, which doesn't work, by the way, is you have the male end of these, but you can't connect, because they have some female jumper cables in there, but they don't connect properly to this. So, I think the, I think you have to plug it into the breadboard, and um, you kind of just have to apply pressure to it to hold it there. I don't know. But guys, that is, that's what I had prepared for you today. Hopefully you walk away with some understanding of what this little dude is. Are those the fat wires that don't fit into the board like that potentiometer? I don't think they're, I mean, they, yeah, they're, they're kind of similar to the potentiometer. But the, the main problem here is the spacing of these pins. It's just, it's not compatible with the breadboard. So you kind of just have to force it. It is what it is. So, like I said, I'm gonna post workshop three, probably on Sunday. Um, but, like I said, it's a shorter workshop. It's basically setting up this circuit and, um, and getting this to work and maybe some small variations of what I just showed you. So it's, it'll be pretty straightforward. Make sure you're working on that lab report. Reach out to your TAs. The, the next thing that's due, I guess the next thing that's due is gonna be this workshop because it'll be due Friday of next week. If you want to join on Twitch on Monday, we'll do this at 7 p.m. We'll kind of go through it together. Um, you'll be doing this in lab if you're an in-person student next week. So that's the next thing that's going to be due. And then after that, it's going to be the lab report. And we're going to have a workshop the week after next. Or wait, what do we have? Yeah, I think we have I think we have workshop four. Hey, thanks, Cowardly Bean. You have a nice weekend as well. That's it for today, my friends. I hope you're having a great Friday. Zach asks, when is the lab report due? Oh yeah, we can um, we can talk about PhD. Uh, let's see. Hey, peace out. The lab report. Are you an in-person or an online student? Because if you're an in-person student, the lab report is due on the day of the week that you did your lab. So if you did it, uh, if you did it on Monday, it's due two weeks later on Monday at, uh, I can't remember if it was 8 p.m. or midnight. I think it's midnight. If you're an online student, the lab report is gonna be due 3-9. I think it's a Tuesday. Yeah, it's a Tuesday. Yeah, thank you, Bobby. I asked about your PhD thesis. Uh, may I ask what you did to implement control of the dynamic structure? Oh my gosh, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. I'm actually, this is one of the few things that I'm proud of in my thesis. Wait, how do I even find it? Where's my thesis? Can I even find my thesis? Wait, where's this gonna be?
Oh, okay, I think I... I'll show you an excerpt. Okay. This... So this, this is a piece of it. So this was this was my advisor, Dr. Maji. He's not at UB anymore. Now he's at Texas A&M. But Dr. Singh, he's still here at UB. So this, this work was with him. I love working with Dr. Singh and Dr. Maji. Um, let me try to give you the gist here. Let's see if we can find something. Oh man, look at the, look at these equations. Like, I know this looks crazy, but it it works out really nice. Um, okay, let's see. Where is this? That looks like a big boy equation. You can do it. It just takes... Um, it, just, it just takes time. Okay, let's... This is the wrong camera. Okay. Too much light okay 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 so imagine imagine you have some flexible structure that you're trying to move from point a to point b like a good example would be uh actually i'm gonna come back over here we'll come back over here let's say you have a, a satellite and it's just like a floating tin can in space. And maybe it has a like a panel over here and another panel over here. Well, when you rotate this satellite, let's say we we now like we moved an angle theta. So now this panel kind of and I, I'm exaggerating this a little bit but you might get vibration of these panels when you move so it, it kind of like deflected a little bit so what what this research was about was how can I move, like if I know that I have to move this angle theta, like I have to do it, what's the fastest way I can do it that minimizes movement of this panel as I do it, okay? So now this, I'll come back to this figure. That's what this figure kind of represents. It's like, I knew that I had to move like to position one or something, but the, the panel vibrated. So I think I have another figure here because we found a way called the post maneuver penalty. And the post maneuver penalty results in this orange line and you see that this orange line vibrates less than the blue, than the green, than the red. So it vibrates a little less. And, oh man, it, the principle see what it's based on I want to show you this okay this is the this is the principle that it's based on I know this is a crazy integral equation but you can you can understand this conceptually so the goal of the controller is to try to minimize this so what is this this is um the integral from TF to infinity. So TF is the time that I'm taking to move from point A to point B. So if you go back to, to this, TF would be 
how long I'm taking to, to finish moving that angle. So the cost is saying, and we called it like J, if you integrate from TF to infinity, which means I'm, int I'm integrating something after the maneuver has already finished. Like we already moved over here. And basically what I'm integrating is the amount of vibration that happens after the movement. So that's just a way of posing this problem, like design a controller so that after I do some movement, the amount of vibrations will be as small as possible. And that's it. Like all of the crazy math that follows from it is trying to find a controller that just makes this small. So essentially instead of just using static structural components to mitigate post movement vibration, you use something that responds to a dynamic measurement. Yes. Yeah, because here's the thing, like, like you said, you can make static structural changes that make your structure vibrate less. However, those changes tend to make the structure heavier, number one. And I think that's the most important part. Uh, and then number two is, if you're trying to do fast movements, even if you make a structural change, it may still vibrate. I, I like, cause faster movement is gonna result in more vibration. So even with structural changes, you'll reach a point um, they could also use, yeah, unfavorable moment of inertia. Sure. So this, this problem is saying it's like vibrations are inevitable to some degree. So how do we minimize the vibrations we will have? Yeah, but that, that was, that's the part of my PhD thesis that I enjoyed the most. And I had the um, I had the luxury of being to being able to study in Taiwan for a little bit at National, how do you say it, like Chungung University with Dr. Chernan Zhuang. Man, I loved being in Taiwan and I was looking at this problem. Loved it. Making maneuvers harder, at least maneuvers of this nature. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for indulging me as I talk about my thesis goodness gracious hey thank you not a student but really enjoying the info and content if I had a professor like you I might have stayed engineering hey thank you do you take questions from internet randos on stream sure no I, I certainly do like I try to for each lecture I try to stick to some certain content that I want to get covered in the day, but I'm more than happy to take any questions from anybody. I may not have any clue, but I can take a stab at it. Zepp rush. Does that have anything to do with the Zeppelin rush from Warcraft 3, the Frozen Throne? Just curious. Oh, no, nah, just my two favorite bands. Okay. Led Zeppelin and Rush. Good for you.
All right, everybody. I'm gonna eat some food. It's been an absolute pleasure hanging out with you. It always is. It is a privilege. It is a, it is a privilege and I'm very happy. Uh, have a great weekend. Have a great Friday. And I'll check in with you guys next week. Adios.